Hi all, uh, good morning. We are just uh, giving it another thirty odd seconds uh, for you to uh, for folks to come in and settle down, and then we'll start. I think you may want to stop now. Thank you, Manoj. Uh, good morning, everyone, and, and a very happy Independence Day uh, on behalf of Nudge Foundation and Assistec Foundation. We are partners in many, many things. I welcome you for Charcha 2021 initiative. Today, we are talking about a very important topic of how technology are transforming the world of people with disabilities. Uh, let me just share my screen. So today, uh, I'm also joined by four phenomenal entrepreneurs uh, who are changing the game uh, of assistive technology. They have innovated certain tools, products, which are really helping people with disabilities to get better educated, better employed, and live life, which is very independent. Uh, welcome, Janvi from DTEC Innovation. Uh, good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Rishi, good morning. Uh, Rishi is from Symbionic Technologies. Hey, Pratik. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Anand, good to see you. Uh, Anand is from True Assistive Technology. Uh, yeah, thanks, Pratik. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Anand, for joining in. And we have, last but not the least, handsome-looking Bonnie from Trestle Labs. Thank you for the generous introduction, Pratik. I'm sure it will be a wonderful session. Well, thank you, folks, uh, for joining in. Uh, what, How we have structured this today's session is uh, you know, I would like to share a certain perspective on not only on disability, but how assistive technology, which is the technology for people with disability and seniors, is changing the game and the life. Uh, while disability often is being talked as a problem, I would want to share with you how it is a big opportunity, uh, not just in terms of making an impact, but really from a commercial yeah, you know, building a commercial enterprise as well. So that's, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes I'd love to share my thought process and some numbers which you might have seen or if you, if you, if you have not seen, you'd be amazed to see some of those numbers. Uh, I'll request all four of them to briefly introduce themselves and talk about their organizations before we moving into more detailed presentation by all four of them. So that's how we are, we have organized the discussion today. Uh, we will uh, hopefully use your time gainfully uh, until one o'clock. Uh, please feel free to write your questions for any of us uh, in the chat window and Manoj will help us moderate it at appropriate time. So once again, welcome to all of you guys. Uh, happy Sunday and happy Independence Day. I, I When I got up, I obviously like all, all of you getting so many messages about the whole independence as a journey, uh, you know, as a nation, what we have lived. Uh, the thought that comes to my mind is that while we are independent, we are not yet inclusive. And I think that's really is where I want to share with you why it matters to really talk about a billion people on earth who are the people with some or the other kind of disabilities. Uh, people with disability from world's largest minority. And another way to think about how large is the problem is that one in seven person on earth has some of the other kind of disability, which is 15% of the world population. Now, a lot of you folks might already know this number, but I also want to point you 
to the problem in India, uh, India has 70 million people with disabilities. Now this number always, you know, gets quoted different ways, but but by large estimate by WHO or some of the other renowned organizations, we are around 70 to 80 million people with disabilities in our nation. And this, these disabilities vary from visual impairment, speech and hearing impairment, a uh, lot of people with locomotive disabilities and a growing tribe, unfortunately, of people with cognitive impairment. Yeah, but why, why not we look at people with disabilities or this whole section of society as more opportunity to help. Uh, we're talking about a billion people which have 8 trillion disposable income. So when I think from a startup point of view, when we established ATF, a strip tech foundation, we saw a lot of fragmentation in the market where uh, while government had phenomenal policies about people with disabilities, they had no idea about the tech innovation which was happening in the country. Uh, we went to the startup and I was personally meeting so many of them, uh, so many phenomenal tech entrepreneurs, but I started realizing sometimes they were making products uh, which were of no use. And that's a typical startup problem which all of us have seen. A lot of them actually were making phenomenal solutions which were of use. But then how do you distribute such a tech? If you and I do a startup sitting in Bangalore, Pune, Mumbai, or any of these big towns, 70% of people with disabilities in India live in rural areas. How do you really encash some of this and monetize some of these you know, equipments or products which you are making? Uh, there were a lot of innovation in India which is happening in tech universities. But we saw a large fragmentation. While we also saw a big opportunity, uh, in India we are talking about uh, if we include these people with disabilities in the economy, we are, we are going to gain five to seven percent of GDP, which is huge. We are going to build, bring tens and la tens of lakhs and crores of rupees in our economy, which is if we just treat these people as potential consumers and you, you know uh, people who can contribute back to the economy as well. And hence, we build ATR. Uh, now we have a larger uh, ecosystem of technology startups in India. Uh, we work with 350 startup in some of the other way. We have an acceleration program where we work with 21 of them. Some of them anyway are going to be presenting their solutions with you. And we're very, very happy and encouraged by the tech innovation, which is really changing the game and the whole landscape. We are hoping uh, with all the startups whom we are incubating and accelerating, we'll be able to make large impact in the society. With this 21 startup, we are already able to reach out to 2.3 lakh with people with disabilities. And that's just the power of tech, uh, you know, which all of us believe in. That gives me personal satisfaction that, uh, you know, with, with, with just beginning the work, you know, in the last couple of years, we are able to make such an impact. Imagine the power of tech, which is going to unfold in years to come. A lot of people think, uh, still think disability as charity, but let me tell you, uh, there's enough data, enough evidence, enough examples in India and the world that the ROI is nine to one. And, and it is phenomenal when you compare it with any other area, uh, not just in the impact space, but you know beyond as well. Uh, the size of disability market is huge. We're talking about $35 billion of projected uh, market by 2027, and I, 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 by all means, I think this this will be much bigger than what it is being quoted here, right? So it's a larger, bigger opportunity, and I think what I want to do is to invite, uh, uh, you know, our panelists, our, our guests uh, in this uh, in this session to briefly introduce uh, themselves and also talk about their solutions before we go into more detailed presentation. So we'll we'll start with. Janvi, yourself, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and take a quick minute to talk about what BleTech does. Sure. Thank you so much, Prati. And happy Independence Day to everyone. It feels very special to represent the missing billion um, on this day. So, hi, my name is Janavi Zoshi and I'm the co-founder of BleTech Innovations. So, we are a social enterprise and we have been working um, for the deaf community in India uh, through different design and technology solutions. Uh, we believe for the last couple of years, we have been doing some pioneering work in deaf education. 
So apart from the tech platform that we have built, which is a digital library for deaf kids, which has learning and educational content in Indian Sign Language. Um, so that's one of the important aspects of our work. And apart from that, we also work on a very programmatic approach on how do we uh, take this tech solution on ground to the schools. Um, so we work with a lot of funding partners, a lot of uh, schools uh, to promote our solution, to promote Indian Sign Language, not only among the education space, but also in terms of uh, the entire industries uh, where we really believe that access to the deaf community Community is important. Thank you. And I'd love to talk more about us during the detailed presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Janvi. Uh, and thank you for all the phenomenal work which you do uh, for the deaf community. I'd like to invite uh, Anand uh, to talk about uh, uh, true assistive technology very briefly and introduce himself. Hi. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, happy Independence Day to everyone. Uh, thanks, Pratik, uh, for this opportunity. And um, so, uh, my name is uh, Anand Putre, and I'm the founder of uh, True Assistive Technology. Um, our aim here is to provide assistive devices, uh, mainly from the mobility perspective. As uh, Pratik mentioned, uh, uh, sometime back, a lot of numbers on how people are missing out, and uh, how you know there is there is a lot big opportunity to contribute to the economy. Uh, to, to do that, one of the key factors is uh, people have to be mobile, they, they, they have to go uh, and be a part of the mainstream society and this is what our uh, uh, aim is to do. So we have started with our first product called Turn Plus which uh, allows people to um, get in, in and out of the car very easily and uh, apart from that we have launched uh, ramps for accessibility into buildings and uh, also transfer boats. Uh, we are also going to come with a series of products which will allow people uh, to move around in their house, uh, outside in open community, as well as in their office space. So this is our overall aim. And uh, yeah, we have just started our journey and we are still in the urban sector and uh, rural sector, as Pratik mentioned, is, is still a long way to go and which is, which is going to be much more challenging. Yeah, that's, uh, that's about us, and uh, uh, we'll come back with a more detailed presentation about our products. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. Uh, thank you for all the good work. I know how exciting has been your journey, uh, and more specifically, when you are trying to partner and make uh, you know your products, uh, you know, enter into the mainstream market. So I look forward to hear and learn more from you, you know, a little later in the session. But let me invite uh, Rishi to tell uh, briefly about his journey, personal journey, while he, uh, you know, shares about Simanic, uh, you know, in detail much later. Yeah, hi, thank you, Pratik, and hi, everyone. Happy Independence Day. Um, so I'm Rishi, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Simbanic Tech. I started Simbanic uh, in 2019 after I met with an accident myself and lost my limb um, when I was looking for some prosthetic options. I could not find anything that could suit me. Like there were some of them were super high cost, and then others would not uh, sufficiently help me achieve my daily activities. So that was the start of a uh, project, um, and now it's a startup. I've been super grateful for Pratik and ATF to bring us on board and help us uh, achieve this vision. Uh, at Symbanic, we are trying to build a high tech and affordable prosthetic arm. Uh, for upper limb amputees, uh, which is controlled through a unique sensor network uh, that we are innovating. And we are trying to improve the lives of amputees by helping them um, with their uh, to do their daily activities with ease and comfort, and also something that they can afford. Uh, this is my story, and I am really looking forward to explain things in detail later on. Um, yep, thank you. Thank you, Rishi. I mean, very. All of us like to solve our own problems, but to really take up a challenge to not only do that, but to solve the problem for you know many others is is not easy. It's very easy to say it, and I and I think that's where I find myself very fortunate to 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 have uh, you know have an opportunity to work with uh, you know people like you and everybody else who's present here. So thank you so much for sharing thank that you. story. Uh, okay, next is our 
Bonnie is talking about Tressel Lab, but I, I think that that is a little later. But Bonnie, why don't you share with us why are you, why are you doing what are you doing? Sure, definitely. Uh, hi all, my name is Bonnie, and uh, uh, to give you some background, during my engineering, I used to volunteer at a blind school back in Ahmedabad, Blind People's Association. So that was the first time I saw Braille books. And um, curious enough, a mechanical engineer. I uh, got some electronics from the market and built a refreshable braille display as a part of my college project and took that prototype back to the NGO and showed it to the students there. And I would enter a character on my laptop and ask them to guess it. So that I will say was the first time I got a sense of fulfillment for the work that I did. Remember, a mechanical engineering graduate, I did not know coding at all. But so that thing stayed by the end of my engineering, which motivated me to eventually take up social entrepreneurship at a point of time where I had two options, whether to go for my master's in aviation and aeronautics or choose the domain of social innovation. So that's how my life transitioned from mechanical engineer to starting Trussell Labs in uh, 2017. And uh, very early on, I'll just take a moment to acknowledge what Pratik said. We met, we work for the blind and the visually impaired community. And one thing that one of our uh, users had told us saying that I want to become a taxpayer. Uh, that is my aspiration. And in that simple line, what he summed up was everything that aspiration of people with disabilities on how they want to equally contribute back to the same community. Uh, one line on what the work that we do at Russell Labs, at Russell Labs, uh, we uh, primarily work with the blind and the visually impaired community. And our goal is to help a blind person access any kind of printed, handwritten, or digital content through audio in real time so that they do not have to depend on either Braille or audio books or somebody else to read the content to them. So that is the empowerment that we strive for and happy to walk, take you to uh, the products that we have built at a later point of time. Well, thank you, Bonnie. Always very interesting to listen to your story and Trissel, the work which you folks are doing. So thank you, everyone. I mean, I I, uh, I always feel blessed because I, I have colorful days, uh, you know, starting Monday to never ending Sundays. Um, while my corporate friends enjoy the weekends, I do not think uh, weekends are, you know, you know, are of any significance when you work in sectors like this, uh, because you always enjoy your work so much. Uh, and I have a I have a blessing to work with closely with all of you guys and many others. So thank you so much for for the introductions. And again, I'd like to thank Nudge Foundation for organizing uh, this session and helping us, uh, you know, put this together to share stories about how technologies can make significant difference in lives of person with disability. Um, uh, I'll take a pause to see uh, and check with Manoj if there are any questions, comments uh, before I hand it over to Janvi to make a more detailed presentation about DTAC. So, Pratik, I think we can move on to uh, the questions. Uh, uh, sorry, the presentations. Yeah. Okay, Janvi, over to you. Tell us uh, more about. Bleed Tech and, and, and the mission which you have taken up uh, to help people uh, you know, with hearing and speech uh, impairment. Over to you. Yes, thank you so much, Pratik. Um, I'm just sharing my screen. While she does that, anybody who's, who's in the audience who has ever a desire to learn sign language in a, in a manner that not only to communicate with people, but also, also do many other things, I think you must talk to Janvi. I personally have benefited talking to her and learning about this, this part of disability. But Janvi, thank you and over to you. Thank you so much. Um, so we are Bleed Tech Innovations and like I said in the introduction, we are building a lot of technology and design solutions for the accessibility and inclusion of the deaf community in India. Um, so before I go into the details, I just thought I'll give you a quick snapshot. Um, so we've been working for this community since two th uh, 2015. 
um, and our main focus uh, is to create accessible content for the deaf people in India in Indian Sign Language and to take this content on ground to the beneficiaries. So, so far we've made more than 5,000 videos in Indian Sign Language and we've, with these videos we've reached over 15,000 beneficiaries directly and a lot of others indirectly through families and teachers and friends. Uh, right now, we're working with more than 55 deaf, deaf schools across the country. Um, and I think that's the beauty of Indian Sign Language. It's it being standard across the country. Once we create something, um, a kid from Maharashtra can access it and a kid from Meghalaya too can access it. So a little bit about the deaf community in India. I think it was a great insight for everyone to know about the disabled community overall in India. Um, so deafness is the second most occurring uh, disability among all of them. Uh, it is said that there are 18 million deaf people in India. Of course, um, the number varies uh, if you refer to different uh, organizations, but it is also believed that it is uh, highly underestimated. A uh, number of deaf students in India would be around four to five million. Um, and that is why our focus uh, for the last couple of year, years has been deaf education, because that's the foundation where, uh, you know, we are going to impact the individual the most to become, uh, I think, like Bonnie beautifully put, a taxpayer and an uh, independent citizen of the country. Um, one of the most, most important gaps that we have been addressing is unavailability of accessible content, be it educational content, be it learning or even entertainment for that matter. There is no accessible material. When I say accessible, I mean that deaf people need material or content that they can see um, in Indian Sign Language uh, because they have hearing disability that leads them to have um, poor linguistic development because they don't have the phonetic feedback, they don't have the audio feedback. They do not end up learning languages organically like all of us. So their dependency is on Indian Sign Language, which is their first language. Um, another important aspect of this gap is the special educators. Now this comes as a big shock to anybody and everybody that I talk to. Unfortunately, 95% of the schools in India uh, special schools who teach only deaf students in India, the special educators or the teachers, they themselves are not trained in Indian Sign Language. So that is another part where through our different programs and initiatives, we are trying to fill this gap by training teachers uh, to learn sign language. Now, in terms of policy, there has been great changes and that's why we think that this is a great time for deaf education to uh, take itself to the next level. ISLRTC, which is the Training and Research Center, which was established, which is a central government affiliated body. Uh, the rights for person with disabilities, I think everybody here will agree it was a game changer for the space that highlighted all the gaps and uh, opportunities in the space. And the new national education policy also emphasizes a lot on Indian Sign Language and the need of content um, to be produced in Indian Sign Language. Uh, so going in details, what are our exact offerings? Um, so we have India's first digital accessible library for special schools uh, where we give tablet-based libraries to these special school, uh, schools which has learning and educational content, like I said, in Indian Sign Language. Um, our newest offering is um, accessible books. So we are creating accessible books which are specially designed considering special needs and accessibility requirements of these deaf children. And another important area where we are contributing is accessible video making services. So we are working with a lot of organizations who have taken this wonderful initiative of making their content accessible to the deaf community. So we help them out with, uh, you know, sign language and other services that can make their content uh, deaf friendly. So talking about in detail of uh, the first, India's first accessible digital library. Um, like I said, it's a tablet-based app that we give to these special schools. 
that has more than 2000 plus learning videos for um, kids of all grades in Indian Sign Language. Uh, we have been now working with a couple of partners to create curriculum focused content, uh, which is, I think, one of the greatest demands. Um, because one of, I think, another shocking number that uh, a lot of you all will not know is 98% of deaf people do not even manage to pass 10th standard. Um, so I think curriculum relate, access to curriculum is another area where we are now trying to contribute. Um, Another aspect that I would like to touch upon is the programmatic approach that we take. So we not only give this app or we not only give this digital solution, but we also um, curate an entire program for the school where we support the teachers, where we support the students through interactive sessions, which are conducted by deaf trainers um, and teachers training for Indian Sign Language. Um, of course, because of the pandemic for the last two years, we were not able to do these, uh, run these physical programs. But before that, we, we had reached 10 schools, more than a thousand kids and 80 plus teachers. We are running the same program uh, digitally. And I think because of the digital nature, it has benefited majorly to all our school partners. So quick study where we uh, try to understand if really sign language content makes a difference in terms of learning outcomes. So we could observe that if a sign language content piece is given, the learning or the written outcome of a student is four to five times more than what he can reproduce with a you know, normal text paragraph. Coming to the next solution, which, which are accessibility books, and I think all of y'all will find it very interesting. Um, so these are books specially designed for deaf kids. It was an initiative that we started as a COVID relief for our partner schools and their students. Uh, but now that has come out to be a new offering that we are going to continue um, even after the pandemic. So we created these books and we home delivered these books to all the students we reached to more than 51 schools all across maharashtra with these books uh, now i have a video on how these books work a quick video uh, so these are basically books with a lot of visuals simpler language and of course qr codes so when scanned through our smartphone app that qr code will give them access to the same content in indian sign language um so a quick video on um, how the books work and also about the curriculum. So we also wish to create these books for curriculum.
with these accessible books now going ahead we are aiming to reach 5000 more kids across the country um and just to uh, you know these books are the next batch of our books are story books so uh, because that was the major feedback that we got that digital education in terms of curriculum kids are uh, now looking forward to entertainment so we have created a mixture of books where there is also stories uh, activities and also curriculum so we are looking like i said we are looking to reach 5000 more uh, kids one kit of the book uh, costs around 500 rupees so we are also looking for funding partners who can support us to reach all these students across the country um we have also done a lot of activities in terms of community building for the teachers for the uh, deaf youngsters as well another aspect this is the last uh, aspect that i would like to talk about is content creation uh, like pratik said i also want to uh, you know emphasize that disability should not be charity anymore disability is not a value addition it's not uh, for creating goodwill but it is a responsibility as an inclusive society um so we are very fortunate to work with these wonderful partners who are taking the responsibility to create content that is accessible for the deaf community as a responsibility um so that it's not a privilege really it's the right of that community we are very fortunate to have all these mentors investors on board and that's that's all i i wanted to share today again emphasizing on the fact that we really want to salute the spirit of an accessible india on this day and thank you so much pratik atf has been always wonderful to us thank you so much for giving us this platform well thank you ganvi uh, brilliant i mean i i know a field as niche as this hasn't got the required attention uh, you know in previous years uh, in fact what i learned from you is our indian sign language is very very recent uh, uh, right it's it's not really as as old as the american sign language and i think the work which you are doing to 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 really educate uh, on one side people with disabilities and kids with disabled enabling kids with disabilities but also to i think i personally believe you're doing phenomenal job to create awareness in the non disabled population and i think that is so so important uh if you take a landscape of companies who employ people with disability and there are a lot of phenomenal organizations uh there uh you i mean one would find that the percentage of percentage of people who are speech and hearing impaired is very very less and and i think it's uh, uh, obviously uh, employing any person with disability is a great good thing because uh, of the capability and the whole value they bring in but i think we need really as a, a movement to employ more and more people uh, with speech and hearing impairment and they can only be employed by, you know by uh, you know if if not the kind of work which you are doing to educate them to enable them to 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 build that whole skill level so thank you so much janvi always always lovely to listen to your story uh, I, i appreciate your time um, let me request uh, anand uh, to to share uh, you know the products uh, which he is built in and i uh, what truly impresses me is just not the products the way he is approaching to mainstream those products in the market so anand over to you uh, to share in uh, in about 5 to 7 minutes your story thank you thanks pratik um, so i will share my screen okay um you are able to see your screen yes okay thank you yeah so um at at true assist to technology our, our aim is to uh, as i mentioned earlier you know to to provide accessibility mainly from the mobility view point um so today we we see uh, there is a challenge in terms of movement uh, be it uh, going to common areas you know going for uh, sightseeing or going to work at every stage you know there is a hurdle you know you you inside your house there is a threshold um you go to office and um, you can go to your desk maybe the moment you step into the cafeteria you cannot go there 
because the cafeteria is a little bit elevated. So a lot of challenges in everyday life and that's, that's what our uh, main aim is. Um, so uh, how, how did we start is uh, basically again from my experience, uh, I started this mainly from, from an innovation perspective, uh, being a mechanical engineer and worked in the automotive industry, I had a passion to, to develop products. And um, uh, my first encounter was with uh, Toyota in 2013 and uh, we already launched one project, uh, product with them, but it, it can, uh, didn't take off that well. And that's why I connected back to my experience in, in the US where uh, uh, people were truly independent, you know, until I was staying there, I couldn't realize that. And um, I could see my own colleague who was neck below neck paralysis, how, how he was totally independent, you know, moving around everywhere, coming to work daily, uh, the designated time. Uh, so that was uh, very much missing. And that's how our journey started with our first product uh, called Turn Plus. Um, <clears throat> So this is this is the product. Uh, apart from that, we have also launched uh, TransPlus and RamPlus. So these products uh, have come up from our user feedback. Um, so since we started in the, into this segment, we we found challenges at, at every step. So we started first with the TransPlus, where the seat will rotate outside, and uh, you know it helps people to get in and get out of the cars. Uh, but there are a lot of people who wanted to commute, you know, with, uh, with partial disabilities and who wanted to drive a car. It was very difficult for them to, to get in. So we designed the uh, transfer boards and then uh, accessibilities into buildings. We, we came up with the ramps. Uh, I will, so these are some of the photos of Turn Plus. Uh, these are the ramps and the transfer board. Uh, we have portable ramps, we have building ramps, we have threshold ramps. This is how a transfer board will help uh, on the driver side. Um, we also in this journey we have won a few awards. Uh, now this is where we, we want to, uh, to you know, come in and you know as Pratik was mentioning how to mainstream uh, 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 this product. So, uh, what what we feel uh, the need is, you know, these products or these uh, facilities should be everywhere. And um, you know, people go out and they see, you know, they cannot take the wheelchair everywhere. Uh, they want to go for sightseeing. Uh, certain areas are not accessible. Um, so that is our, has been our approach. You know, we want to come up with universal designs. So keeping that in mind, that's what we did with Turn Plus. And uh, you can see here, like we have installed in almost all Indian brands. Uh, up, and we have also covered uh, so many different uh, conditions. Uh, the other challenge is every condition is different and every problem, you know, every um, problem has a different solution. So it's, it's very, very challenging for us to come up with, uh, you know, uh, uh, solutions which are, um, which will work for everyone. So that is one of the major challenge. Uh, going forward, what we want to do is, uh, of course, we are talking about the automotive side is, you know, uh, looking at uh, digital accessibility, physical accessibility and driving accessibility. We, we are looking at providing solutions where a wheelchair person can drive a car. Uh, that is our, our final aim. I will quickly run a two minute video, which will kind of a give a glimpse of what we are doing. She's a lady, she's already working and then she is having difficulty to travel every day. And uh, now without uh, being a lady, it's always difficult to, you know, uh, get assistance everywhere. So with our product, she can, uh, with minimal assistance, she can uh, travel. Uh, this one of our customers uh, who has to take his mother to to hospital every day, and then uh, she is bedridden. She's eighty plus, and with our product, it's very easy for them to transfer. Uh, one of the challenges today is uh, mainly from the for for caretakers. Um, during this transition, many many people you know meet with accidents, and they lose their life. 
so he's a person with polio and now he can earlier he, he used to crawl and get inside a car but now he can he can do that uh, in, in a very proper way without without much as uh, hindrance so this is how our product works and we, we want to bring this in to much larger population we were uh, trying to bring this in the taxi segments so that people does who don't own cars can also use it and uh, make their travel comfortable um, we want to make all buildings accessible so we have designed uh, ramps uh, where even non accessible buildings can be made accessible uh, by putting these ramps quickly uh, we often see we go out and we often see you know in an atm that you know they put a notice that uh, they regret uh, the in inconvenience uh, for not having a ramp uh, the reason most of the time the reason being you know they don't have the space and uh, our ramp solutions you know help uh, 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 for that so um, this is what we are doing and uh, this is just a beginning and we want to much go uh, you know we, we still have to go very very long way um, yeah that that's it from me well thank you anand uh, uh very nice products and i know the way you're trying to position is this uh, is not only for people with disabilities but also for elders as well um, you like it or not believe it or not we are all going to get old <laughs> and uh, i mean uh, at some point some of us or most of us would need some of these devices i also think that we take very limited view when we think about accessibility for people with uh, mobility challenges uh, I, i personally believe it's not you know uh, uh, accessibility in buildings or in offices or schools is just not about building ramps and having accessible lifts i mean i my, the 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 barometer which i use for accessibility is if a person is able to go to the restroom independently which is such a basic human need and i know some of your devices really aid uh, building that accessibility so thank you so much uh, anand uh, appreciate your time let me quickly move to rishi to tell about symbionic and what he set out to build rishi over to you hey thanks pradeep once again let me just share something yes i hope this is yes we can see your screen uh, although it is little smaller uh, rishi is it yeah little much bigger now yes. please go ahead yeah yeah so yes. hi guys uh, again this is rishi from symbanic and um so at symbanic we are trying to build an affordable and intuitive prosthetic arm for upper limb amputees um so i just quickly start with the problem that we are solving and Uh, how it all came about um so our mission is to build an affordable and functional prosthetic for amputees so that they can gain independence in their daily life and and our vision is to create an entire ecosystem of devices that can assist them uh, to achieve things that in our like normal life we might consider them to be very small things right so like pratik said one of the most important factors would be like if they can go to their uh, do their business in the morning by themselves without having to depend on other people um i think someone as someone who went from being uh, fully able to disabled i can appreciate that uh, sentiment a lot so like tying your shoelaces or going uh, to bathroom or like you know getting ready by yourself these are all things that you would not want someone else to help you with um in your daily life so at symbanic that's where we started working on this product and we are trying to help uh, people achieve that level of independence um so our pe the people that we are trying to reach out to uh, would be amputees about the age of 8 years who have some level of uh, their stump muscle control um who and who want to like you know regain independence and also like feel comfortable wearing their prosthetic 
Um, so let me quickly introduce the problem and what is the exact issue that is uh, currently present in the market in the prosthetic industry. So when I went uh, to different places that sells prosthetic arms, uh, one of the major uh, issues that we could uh, witness was that uh, the higher end versions that could have some uh, auto autonomous actions would have some level of uh, either cost barrier or um, customizability barrier. So it would not be available for everyone since their product would be made as a one size fits all. Otherwise, the cost would be enormous to the point where it would be laughable to even think about avoiding it. 40, 50 lakhs for a uh, bionic arm um, is really not something that an average Indian can afford. The other one would be uncomfortable to wear. So the users mostly would not wear, want to wear something uh, like uh, like a prosthetic, which is like more than four or five kilos um, for more than an hour or so. So usually uh, people who even tried and afforded prosthetic arm would keep the um, keep it, like shelve it for some time and only use it during important occasions, which again defeats the entire purpose. And it's not very intuitive to use. It's um, uh, complicated in the ways that it has been designed and um, it uh, for an average uh, person to use it, it needs to be simple and efficient. So that's where we come in. We want to change this entire dynamics of how prosthetic is seen in India um, and into something that is, oh, um, you know, wow, that's cool, sort of a uh, sentence that needs to be said when people see someone with a prosthetic arm. Um, so the other side of issues with having like a amputation or disability is that uh, like, since it's a visible uh, disability, you, uh, the amputees who are, um, you know, who face a lot of uh, uh, stares or like, you know, they don't, uh, they don't get jobs or there's a difficulty performing uh, their daily activities. All of these um, lead to social stigma or uh, depression and there's a lot of host of other issues that people face. So our solution here is a prosthetic arm, which is uh, fully automatic, uh, which has individual grip patterns uh, for each of the fingers, uh, which can be controlled intuitively through um, action thoughts. So when a user thinks about doing an action, we collect that signal and we interpret it and we try to send that signal to the hand and control uh, the actions um, very accurately. So that was, that is the goal which, with which we started. At present, uh, we are at an early stage of development. We want to finish this product and get it into beta users by the end of um, this year. And so I think Pratik had uh, very clearly given some good numbers about uh, disabled population. Uh, so let me just break it down even further into amputee population. For in, in India, at least, uh, the upper limb amputees uh, come to around 10 lakhs, in which uh, 1.5 somewhere on an average will have access to some sort of uh, advanced prosthetic, be it just an open and close arm or like, you know, simple advanced prosthetics. And 30% uh, of them would be below poverty line. And both of them are not someone we want to currently uh, touch on. But the rest 5.5 lakhs are the people who have disability but are not able to afford prosthetics uh, or are not able to access prosthetic limb because of a host of other issues that I had mentioned previously. And this is the impact area that we want to touch upon right now. And this uh, the 5.5 lakh uh, amputees um, would be a huge, tremendous boost uh, for them to have an advanced prosthetic arm that they can use on a daily basis. Um, so let me quickly go to the product and I'll then share a video so I don't take a lot of your time. So this is our product. So we have individual finger movements, adaptive gripping, manual wrist rotation, opposable thumb, which is one of the most important things that we've uh, noticed uh, necessary for uh, people to use their uh, hand. Um, the sensor is placed in the stump. Uh, this is an uh, above elbow amputation prosthetic. So the stump is, uh, the socket is uh, like, you know, in the uh, socket plus elbow is present here. So we also built in a motorized elbow. So it's a complete setup. 
This comes along with its own uh, sensor network, a software package that allows users to uh, connect to the hand and uh, set up their own uh, unique set of grip patterns, whatever they um, might feel most comfortable using. For me, I like riding my bike. So I use, uh, so for me, that is one of the most important grip patterns. Uh, the other one would be probably using a mouse, using a pen. So these are all things that, um, you know, small things that would help me, uh, you know, like improve my quality of life at least 10 to 15% better um, and achieve over 95% of my daily activities, which is a big number because if I'm able to reach the 95% mark, I think that is, um, that would help me uh, with the con self-confidence that I need. And that's a goal. Um, so this is how we've divided it. Uh, we are breaking down our development into two phases. The phase one, which is going to be launched uh, now, would be uh, less, uh, like a lower version, and that uh, which will basically have all the uh, uh, parts that we had mentioned before. Um, the process in which we are trying to uh, reach out to our users uh, would be that once a user gets in touch with us, we would uh, get their data through scanning on uh, their um, residual limb and the normal hand, and then customizing their socket, the hand, according to their specifications, and then deliver it. So we want to make the entire process as simple as uh, something that they don't have to spend a lot of time and efforts. Um, the current state of the uh, art or a current state of the market in which a person has to get a prosthetic arm, it takes them a minimum of two months uh, and a maximum of six months for them to go and get, um, um, like, you know, get their prosthetic arm socket fitted and everything. So we are trying to reduce that to two weeks. And that is one of the uh, problems that we are trying to solve. Um, so, yes, let me just quickly share a video with you on how this entire process works. Pratik, is this visible? Yeah, I can see the Symbionic Titan, uh, Rishi. Right, thanks once again. That's good. So we scan the stump of the user, and then we create an uh, create a socket enclosure. Now this is one of our first users. She's an artist. So yes, so that's about uh, how things have been. And we've been working on this for the better part of the last two years uh, and some more. And we've, our plan is to achieve um, like, you know, 100 users by next year, reach 100 users by next year and see how it goes from there on. Um, yeah, so if there is any questions, we would love to, to answer. Thank you, Rishi. Um, Thank you, Rishi. Um, I will yeah. probably take it. Uh, take the questions in the end. We'll request yes. Manoj. Uh, what uh, uh, What Rishi did not talk about is is that he's built a very cool startup team now. Uh, um, I, I can tell you, folks, that running a startup, anyways, is is, is as all of us know, is a tough journey. While it's to you know, we, we keep reading about those million billion dollar funding. I can tell you, running a social <laughs> startup is such a such a tough job. Uh, my personal experiences of working with all all the entrepreneurs, including Rishi, is that, um, and and even in COVID time, I haven't seen a single uh, social enterprise, a single startup in disability calling and saying it's tough journey. I'd like to give up, and I think that's really is where 
you know, I get inspired and motivated when I work with uh, people like Rishi. In fact, in fact, I have I have heard, seen, and, and closely work with 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 Symbionic and other startups to really say how do we create more impact? Because in COVID time, while all of us have had difficult time, and 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 you know, near and dear ones have had difficult times. I can tell you, people with disability have faced more difficult time. Uh, uh, and I'll give you a simple example. While uh, uh, all the education uh, for kids have gone online, I mean, our kids uh, have taken the laptop and seamlessly, or almost seamlessly, have logged into their schools. You know, through through the digital tools. Uh, none of the special schools are open. Uh, so, have we ever thought about how a person, a kid with autism, who used to come to uh, 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 you know, special school in person and used to learn and get educated is now uh, not only going to miss out uh, his or her educational milestone, but also the development milestone. And 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 that is where the work and uh, and the products uh, uh, of all these startups become more relevant. And 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 they and and I'm uh, like I said, I'm I'm so so inspired by. Definitely Lolo startup, but definitely Rishi personally for bringing bringing that zeal. And I mean, while it is difficult, I think I think all of these guys are making it so much fun. It's not worth doing if you if you are not having fun building what you're what you're doing. And and I think what I see is they're having so much fun uh, themselves building these products and and while they create the larger impact. So thank you, Rishi. So thank you, Pratik. Uh, um, just like like to add, I think a lot of all the so one as a startup in assistive tech we feel that we don't have a lot of community around us to like you know talk leverage or um like you know just interact with i think that's where you guys come in and like i mean that has been a tremendous impact for our growth as well so i'd like to thank you for that pratik uh, thank you so much Vishy. always a pleasure super so by interest of time why why don't we request bonnie to Come in and share Trissel Lab uh, uh, the story. Bonnie, over to you to talk about many, many things, which as many times I hear, I learn. You know, I, I still want to hear, you know, one more time so that I learn more. So over to you. Thanks. Sure, sure. Yeah. And uh, I believe this is a good point to start. You know, uh, having heard uh, Janvi, Anand, Rishi, everybody coming to the blind and the visually impaired community. One thing that we are often asked when we say that we are building an app for the blind people, we are building a product which connects with the laptop and they can use it, use that product with the laptop. People come to us and say, hey, let forget about the product. How do they use a smartphone? So I thought this, this could be a good start to how do you how does a blind person use a smartphone? So just as a general uh, trivia, <laughs> all of our phones have this feature called TalkBack inside the accessibility settings of our phones. So as soon as you enable this setting, your phone starts speaking to you. So no, uh, uh, the, the myth is that a blind person uses his voice to control the phone. No, he simply use, he uses his touch gestures, keeps swiping left to right and uses the smartphone just the way we do. They do WhatsApp, emails, calls, they do everything. I'll give you an example. Um, so here's a short video of uh, Ranganath, who's sharing an image he got on WhatsApp to the Kibo app that we have built, which basically will then speak to him what's written in that image. Alternatively, Ranganath can also use the capture to read feature to scan a document or a business card menu card that he got uh, when he was outside and he can listen to it or even read it. Now we can do this, all of these across the 60 global languages that we support, which includes 13 Indian languages. So we saw how Ranganath is using this phone. Let us see how he uses a laptop now. Um, this has a voice, I, I hope you're able to. The voice is a little feeble, Bonnie. Yeah, no, no problem. The, the whole intent was uh, to just demonstrate that there is an auditory feedback that a person, when he's using the screen reader, he gets. And that's how we can completely and independently use 
devices like smartphones and laptops. So here's how we begin uh, our journey at Tressel Labs, where our vision is to empower the blind and the visually impaired community towards inclusive education and employment by real-time content access. Content, all of us know, uh, is very important to learn. And especially when we look at the blind and the visually impaired community, uh, there are 12 million of them, you know, again, as per one of the statistics, uh, but more importantly, uh, they are heavily reliant on Braille and audiobooks. All of us know or might have heard of or even seen. But the fact of the matter is less than 1% of the content is available in Braille. Let us look at our workplace scenario. We, we see things in paper or printed or handwritten text. We don't have Braille books around us. And coming to audiobooks, it takes four to six weeks for someone to audio record a 300 page book. Because imagine a volunteer reading every single page and word of the book. So it's a time consuming and both of these things are dependent on somebody else to make it accessible to me as a blind person. Also late blind individuals, they do not learn Braille. Imagine at the age of 30, 40, 45, you lose your eyesight through some accident or some disease. People are not motivated to go back and learn Braille. And uh, regional language content is again inaccessible. In the English, English uh, sorry, Hindi, Marathi, Kannada, some of these content are even not accessible by technologies uh, built that are commercially available uh, mostly in the West as well. Here's an example of what do I mean by inaccessible content. So we have two types of PDFs. So a PDF, it means if you are able to select the text, that is an accessible PDF, and the screen reader will be able to read it to you. But contrast this thing with an, a PDF which is scanned by apps like Cam Scanner or some other scanner that you have and save it as a PDF. You cannot select the text and hence a screen reader will not be able to read it out to you as a blind person. And we have these inaccessibilities all around us. You know, just for an example here, this is the order by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare on COVID guidelines, which is scanned. So it's inaccessible. So how does that, these critical information get disseminated in an accessible way to a blind and a visually impaired person, that's where we come. So we built Kibo, an end-to-end -end solution to access any kind of printed, handwritten, or digital content through audio across 60 global languages, including 13 Indian languages. Our product suit, I'll call it a suit, uh, caters to the lifestyle, learning, and the earning segments. Um, the lifestyle's uh, product being the mobile application, which reads essentially like, all the documents you get, digital documents, and you can on the go uh, listen to them in audio. Uh, for an example, if you have large volumes of printed content that you have to scan and read, students preparing for IS exams, MPSC exams. So the Kibo access device helps you scan and read printed and handwritten content. And the Kibo desk portal allows you to, so Kibo desk and Kibo app are like WhatsApp and WhatsApp app. Let's keep it simple. Uh, and I'll, I'll just give you some details on each of the products. So Kibo app helps you listen to uh, any document across 12 file formats, PDF, TXT, DOCX, EPUB. You can listen to all these documents. It also hosts a repository of 1 million plus accessible books. So we're partnered with online digital libraries, online digital libraries like Sugama Pustakale Bookshare, through which you can actually listen, uh, download and listen to the text in audio. So that is the repository of books that our users have. And all of these is offered with an immersive reading learning experience. So much so that a visually impaired person, even while reading a book, can highlight the text. Use a yellow highlighter, right? But we have built an audio highlight feature in which even they can highlight audio text and prepare notes for it. We just saw an example how a visually impaired person scans the document and shares it with Kibo. Now, and he even captures a photograph using his smartphone's camera. But imagine scanning a 200 page book using your phone and it visually impaired people are often not dexterous enough to capture documents using their phones. So that's where our Kibo access device comes into the picture where they can simply scan and listen to the documents in audio. Not only that, suppose you're scanning an English document, but you want to listen to it in Marathi. You can translate the document and listen to it or else download it in editable Unicode formats and Either you can print Braille books, you can prepare ebooks, you can do all of them. So you can download the text as well. 
So uh, here's a quick uh, overview of how you can even connect the device to your smartphone and use it. So it's compatible with laptop as well as smartphones. And simply you go to the website, keyboard.tracellabs.com. You don't need to install any special software for it. Take any book that you have, place it on the, on the device, open the any page that you want to start scanning. Simply press capture button and press the process button. It processes and gives you the text, which you can listen to it. Even translate it, here we translate it in Hindi, and again listen to it in audio, or else download it in editable formats, we download it in doc format, and again you can download, open it in Microsoft Word and start editing the whole document. So this gives people the freedom to read any printed or handwritten text. Now for an example, talking of the PDF, you remember the PDF that I showed you, the inaccessible one? Suppose if you have it on the laptop, you can simply import the PDF onto the keyboard desk platform that we have built and keyboard desk will actually process it and give you the text in the output. The rest of the process are more or less similar up to what we saw in keyboard access device. You can translate, download, save, save to cloud, all these features. Where we are, so that we had saw the products, we saw how people with vision impairment use te technologies to access content and since July 2019, uh, when we launched our product in the market, we are now across 20 states in India with more than 250 plus customers across seven countries uh, the, with the Kibo Access device. Kibo mobile application is empowering 43,000 plus visual impaired people worldwide who have cumulatively access more than 4.8 million plus documents with an overall engagement time in excess of 39 million plus minutes. Uh, we have received letters of recommendation from eminent institutions like IIM Ahmedabad, Delhi University, uh, ILS College, NIEPVD, which is like the apex body for uh, any assistive tools for people with blindness and vision impairment. And even uh, from Srimadhi Pranjal Patil, who is India's first female visually impaired IS officer on how she is able to assess her office documents independently as well. And where do we go from here? Uh, you know, we really believe that uh, to create any change, you know, people need to come together and collaborate. And here's how I believe that you can contribute to our mission uh, because we strongly work with academic institutions, you know, some of which are IIM Ahmedabad, IIM Bangalore, Delhi University, NID, and we help institutions that make their libraries inclusive. So we deploy our products there and their libraries can be made inclusive, which is also under the new national education policy and the UGC's mandate of creating accessible libraries. So that's one way. Uh, second, we recently partnered with Read India. And this use case is beyond people with visual impairment. So Read India is actually, they have 50 resource centers all across India. And they are uh, they partnered with us to deploy Kibo app across the coordinators of all the centers in which now they are, the coordinators scan the content and they send it to the library members and they can not only access it in the original language that the document was, but even translate it to their own regional language and listen to it. So also addressing literacy uh, programs uh, as a part of it. So any leads or any uh, connects would really help. And uh, the last, again, uh, because we understand that 90% of uh, people with visual impairment live come from low income settings. So either you can pick up subsidize or donate the products you know, uh, we often say this, that with the Kibo app, it's like with two rupees per day, uh, a visually impaired person can independently access content. So it, it just boils down to like two rupees per day of uh, the subscription that we uh, have for the Kibo mobile application. So you, either you can subscribe, donate, uh, and we I'm, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you know, you can get in touch with me. And, you know, there are a lot of people that are waiting to, you know, hear from you are waiting for your support and this will really be uh, value adding to their lives and over this journey we've been supported by various organizations and i always say this but the best was when one of our user dipali she called us to say she has cleared her second year ba exam thanks to the content we made accessible on kibo or even for that matter pinky who's a visually impaired professor with the haryana government on how she is now able to assess the handwritten answer sheets of her students so all these are a testimony that our users love us and this is the impact that we continue to build, strive for, and this is what motivates us and keeps us going. Thank you so much, Pratik, once again, for this lovely opportunity. We're happy to connect with the members of the audience. 
now or even through uh, i'm active on linkedin as well so we can connect there as well thank you so much thank you bonnie for, for, uh, uh, why don't you also share what does kibo mean uh, sure. when you talked about the product and the impact it's making yeah so, uh, kibo is actually an acronym for uh, knowledge in a box and it's also a japanese word which means hope asha wow so, yeah it, it it works both ways for us and uh, yeah really happy that kibo came into existence since 2017 and we've been able to sustain the impact over the longest time and you know continue to do so and build our community phenomenal thank you so much bonnie appreciate uh, uh, you know you sharing your story i just have a few more minutes uh, you know uh, to talk about you know something which we are doing at atf and then what we will do is we'll take some of the questions uh, probably we'll take manoj's help to see if we missed out any questions in the chat window before we finally end by our, by putting a rapid fire question round to all four of them and i have to tell you i haven't told them that I, uh, yet that i will do a rapid fire round with them so they don't know the question it's really truly a rapid fire round i'm sure all of four of them are smiling one of the things which you guys would have noticed is that while all four of them and many more startups are doing phenomenal work the awareness about these startups and the impact and the product they are making is very very less yeah uh, uh, i don't know how many of you actually knew this as a field uh, uh, or as a section of startups in the country while we talk about um, uh, while we talk about so many thousands of startup by some estimate uh, we have 40000 active startups in india uh, who have raised 63 billion dollar funding i think we have already uh, uh, this year we have got already 2021 unicorns which is phenomenal for for a startup ecosystem in, you know in india but while i say this we at atf we also realize that uh, the the awareness about these startups in the country has been very very poor and hence we have created a, a, a initiative which is which is which is called atf awards assisted uh, tech foundation awards to recognize the work of startups and i'm sharing my screen um, if you can see uh, uh, really to recognize the work of startups we have three categories as we speak uh, first is the emerging startup which is the best assistive technology startup for the innovation which is in the innovation in the field of product or technology we also want to recognize established startups who you know from a jury choice uh, most impactful startups and women led it is startup uh, we've had phenomenal response from uh, from the industry uh, in fact when we launched uh, these awards uh, and especially the people choice award where the voting happened we got 22915 votes just in 10 11 days and i'm while while this number is amazing and which also honestly surprised me i know that more people hear about the startup and the and the products uh, the better it is through these awards we are not only uh, awarding or recognizing startups but also the ecosystem enablers which is the right side uh, of the category in disability just being uh, you know innovating a product for people with disability is not enough you have to take support uh, of many other institutions and organizations and as enablers the corporate social responsibilities play a crucial role not only in just funding but many other things non profits because they know beneficiaries we you and i can sit Uh, in these towns like i said earlier and build these products however ngos uh, who have uh, you know some of them have existed for 50 plus years know the beneficiaries know their problems and the issues so they are critical stakeholders in the uh, field of assistive technology innovation investors i i personally believe um, uh, that more can happen in this area to, uh, to excite and Uh, create awareness among the investor community at atf we have done several initiatives to uh, to involve people who can potentially open up their purse and invest uh, which is i i personally believe if 5 years down the line if there's one trend all of them would have missed out would be a trend of innovation in assistive technologies government uh, not only from policy perspective but they can be the biggest buyers we have 
uh, amazing people in the government. Uh, for example, government of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Telangana, they're doing phenomenal work, but I'm sure there's a lot that can be done on the government side as well. Last but not the least, uh, on the educational institutions, I know a lot of them are innovating solutions, doing a lot of good research uh, out there. That research, unfortunately, in past hasn't come out uh, too much, uh, in, and, and may, you know, and commercialized got commercialized in the world. We are working very closely with all of these institutions uh, to bring their innovations, but they are a critical stakeholder in the, in our field of assistive technology. Uh, let me uh, also share, there are people uh, from the industry and society who are helping. So Rahul Dravir, uh, uh, whom all of us obviously know, is going to launch the awards trophy, which has been designed by Titan. Uh, Professor Raghwan, who's the uh, principal scientific advisor to the government of India, is going to do the keynote. Chris, who has been the founder of Infosys, also is introducing a category we have Shekhar Nayak. I don't know if, uh, how many of you know him, but he was the form. He's a former captain of Indian blind cricket team. He is a Padamshi awardee. Yeah, 2017. There were two cricketers who won uh, or who were awarded Padamshi, uh, given Padamshi award. One was Virat Kohli, who we fondly love and admire, but the second was Shekhar Nayak. Uh, and let me tell you, he has better records than any of the other captains whom you know of. Uh, he is going to be present at the final ceremony. Uh, I have phenomenal people from the industry, Professor Rishi, from, uh, who's the director of IAM Bangalore, Ravi, and several others from the industry who, are, who have been a part of the jury. In fact, the jury rounds are over, and we are now looking forward to 20th of August, 11 a.m. So I would like to invite all of you to spare an hour on 20th Friday next week to not only listen uh, to all these phenomenal people, watch Rahul Dravid launching a trophy, but also know who's the winner of all these awards. So I will send this link in the chat as well. Uh, so love to invite all of you guys to, to, to be a part of this uh, journey, uh, which is concluding on 20th August next Friday, 11 a.m. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Manoj. Uh, before we conclude, I I would love to see if there's any question which we have missed out responding to. Pratik, I think uh, most of the questions have been answered. Um, uh, eagerly waiting for your rapid fire round. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, Manoj. Uh, well, uh, before I you know ask the questions to these guys, uh, I definitely again wanted to thank uh, Nudge Foundation for this charcha. Um, um, if, if in person, we would have called it Chai Pe Charcha, but it's okay. Uh, I think charcha is good enough, and I think it's a phenomenal initiative, uh, you know, uh, in the field of social uh, entrepreneurship. So, and thank you for uh, the, your partnership and inviting all of us again. Um, I have uh, to start with, I want to ask first question to Bonnie. What inspires you? The stories that I told of how people are using, how our products have become an integral part of their lifestyle. So much so, even though we, uh, if people call us and say, sir, you are doing a good job, don't just stop it. Just, matlab, we don't want the startup bus, this product to fizzle out like, you know, lack of funding because of any other thing. So when people come to us and say, no, this is a small thing, no, sir, do anything, but don't stop this. So, I mean, there's no, there's no, you don't need any other motivation than the fact that, you know, how critical uh, your your solution has become a part of somebody's life. So there's nothing more inspiring than that. I know the kind of passion and the kind of zeal which you bring in, you and Akshita are bringing to build these products. Uh, I can uh, rest assured ETF is with you and we will, we will not let anything uh, you know happened to Tristan lab <laughs> you have our solid support whatever you need so thank you so much Janvi what inspires you every day to get up get up to do what you do I think of course apart from what Bonnie said that so many stories that come around I think all these guys also inspire me a lot uh, knowing that we're not alone <laughs> everybody is fighting every day um, and it's really worth continuing. I think that that's what really inspires me. 
Super. Thank you, Janvi. Anand, over to you. Uh, yeah, yeah, Pratik. I think the biggest reward, as you know, everyone feels, is you know, the, the impact story of each and every customer. I mean, I have more than 100 plus users right now, and we have spoken to almost everyone. And um, I remember each and everyone's impact story and how how it has helped them and what uh, you know how they are doing the things which they couldn't do before. Um, that is the biggest, uh, you know, uh, this for us, you know, to start up, wake up every day and, you know, push ourselves to do more and more and, you know, solve more and more problems. Fantastic. Rishi. Yeah. Hi, Pratik. So I don't know. I think this answer keeps changing every year. Uh, when I started, it was more about solving my problem. Now, every time I talk to a user, when the users uh, co-create this with me and their excitement. I think that that has been one of the major things to get me up in the, every morning. My team, they are super excited to see the progress every day. So I think those things are like, you know, super inspiring to keep doing this thing. Fantastic. Thank you, Rishi. If if we are next year sitting on Charcha 2022, what you would like would have should have changed? Any one of you? Charcha 2022. I, Any one of you? Yes, go ahead. I think if we could also bring on board our users, not just me, like all of us, and they could share their stories, that would be a good change. Super. Janvi? I think a sign language interpreter would be a great gesture. Yes, I, I think thank you for reminding us that we probably should have done, already done that. But thank you so much. I'll, I'll, I'll copy paste me, but I'll just I second Rishi's answer to uh, know because we're talking of disabilities and you know the platform. For an example, we're using AirMeet now. You know, the fact that people with vision impairment also were, would be able to contribute, I mean, attend these sessions, right? Because these needs to be inclusive. So, mix of Janvi's and Rishi's answer. Uh, so, I'll say inclusive platforms using inclusive platforms for equal and accessible uh, access for everybody. Fantastic. Thank you, Bonnie. Anand, you can't give Bonnie's answer. It's already been done. <laughs> Something different. Uh, yeah, I think it's um, uh, the more thing is we have to see where um, more stakeholders would, would come in. I mean, more stakeholders from both from the solution side as well as uh, uh, people who are using it. Um, it kind of overlaps <laughs> the other answers, but yeah, that, that's where where pe people should be able to see, and uh, this will help uh, you know all these products to be be a part of mainstream. You know, like how how. Uh, like Bonnie, me, Janvi, we are all using our specs, right? Which is which is a device, which is a, which is a mainstream device. And if we see such products everywhere, uh, it, it will help uh, 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 everyone. Fantastic! Thank you so much, to all four of you. You've always been lovely, uh, uh, you know, uh, speakers. Uh, uh, every time I speak to you, I learn so much. Uh, something new about your products and the startup, but but. But when, you know, more, much more than that, uh, but thank you so much for your time and thank you, thank you so much, uh, you know, for, for sharing your stories. Uh, Manoj, again, um, thank you to Nudge Foundation and I thank personally to you, Manoj, for organizing this and inviting. Uh, it's lovely to, for or ATF to always partner with Nudge Foundation for in such initiatives. So back to you, if there's anything else, I know we have five minutes left. Uh, uh, my pleasure, Pratik. Uh, my pleasure and our pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for uh, putting this uh, kind of together um, for the joyful uh, learning experience that, we, that you know that this session has had. I have like I've I've got to learn so much, and I'm sure uh, the audience as well. Um, and I think the uh, focus from merely talking about development to talking about equitable development is something that you know sessions like these really and i think uh, in charcha uh, having this session really kind of i think um, cornered that edge for us and kind of helped us make charcha kind of complete in that sense so uh, thank you so much to you bonnie janvi rishi and anand uh, for doing the amazing work that you guys are doing and uh, for uh, 
uh, kind of inspiring all of us. Uh, and I think this is a perfect uh, session, uh, sorry, uh, session for okay. a segue into the next one. Um, uh, and I just wanted to quickly uh, also tell the audience that we have uh, the last uh, session for Charcha, which is coming up in exactly four uh, minutes. Uh, the topic for the session is uh, solving critical problems of development, the startup way. And we have a fabulous uh, panel. We have Prashant Prakash, Nitin Kamath, Meena Ganesh, and Sujit John. So uh, request all of you to please head over uh, to that particular event. And I'm sure that's going to be a cracking conversation like this has been. Um, thank you so much again, everyone. Uh, a very, very happy Independence Day uh, to all. Thank you so much, Manoj. And good luck. Have a good rest bye. of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Manoj. Good luck. Bye. Bye. bye, guys. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.